Today, we will be talking about how to set up a project brief. And a project brief, that is basically a document that specifies exactly what the goal of your development will be. So what are you trying to create? And this is a very important topic because this is the document that your designers and engineers that you will collaborate with later on will work from. So if you get it right and define your goal in a correct way, then you will save yourself a lot of time and they will be working in the direction that you want them to. And uh, with that, let's jump into it and start talking about how to set up our project brief. Now to start setting up the project brief, we need to have some idea at this point for what type of product that would actually help our target customer. So how should it look like and how should it work? If you still don't have any idea for what you want to develop, that's completely fine. But in that case, I advise you to go back to previous lessons on idea creation, idea validation and customer research, and then come back to this lesson once you have some idea for what you want to work on. Now, assuming that you do have an idea for what you want to develop, we can continue and take a look at the template attached with this lesson. And as you see, this is a template for the requirement specification, which is a document that lists all of the objective things that our product needs to fulfill. So now let's just go through the document point by point and understand exactly what the different sections should include. So the first section here, it is the summary. Just write a couple of paragraphs about what the overarching goal of the project is and uh, why you have even decided to start working on it. That way, when you share your document with freelancers, they will understand better what you are trying to achieve and they will likely feel more motivated to help you. Now moving on, we have the target user and this is quite straightforward. So who is your product for? Uh, mention any points that you think will be relevant. Then we have the functional requirements, and this is simply a list of the objective things that the product should do. So uh, don't write, it should look good, because that is a subjective thing. Here we want to focus only on the objective points. So for example, let's say that we're developing a phone holder, uh, then one functional requirement could be that it's able to hold an iPhone Max, so a really, really heavy phone. And another functional requirement could be that it's below a certain weight. So keep it to these types of very objective requirements. Then moving on, we have the technical requirements. And this is more relevant for high-tech products, so products which integrate electronics. And here you could write that the product needs to use Bluetooth, or that it needs to have a certain CPU speed, or whatever other electronical requirements that you have. And then finally, we have the interaction requirements. And in this section, you should list all of the external systems and products that your product needs to work with. So for example, let's say that we're developing a bell for a bicycle. All right, then we know that the bell, it needs to mount onto a bicycle. So we can define in this section exactly what type of diameter of the handle it should mount on, what brands of bicycle it should mount on, and so on and so forth. And once you're done filling in that section, you should have a document that really lists all of the objective requirements that your product should have. And uh, remember that if you're uncertain about whether a requirement is actually a requirement or just a nice to have, I would advise to leave it out for the moment, because putting too many requirements into the document would uh, narrow the creativity of the designers that we will be working with very soon. So only put down what you're absolutely certain about into this document. Now, next up, let's talk about mood boards, which are the subjective side of the project brief, and they define exactly how the product should look and how it should feel. So this is more of a soft requirement than what we have done so far. And a mood board, it's fundamentally something very simple. It's just a collection of images, which can be of uh, similar products like the one that you are developing, or it can be images of completely unrelated things. And the point of these images is to create a feeling when you look at them. So for example, you can see on the screen now a couple of different mood boards, which all have a very distinct aesthetic feeling to them. Providing a designer with a mood board, it's really the best way to make sure that you're on the same page about what type of look you're going for. Because if you just tell the designer that you would like something minimalistic, it is very likely that you will not get what you expected. Because everybody have their own unique interpretation of different words, but with a mood board you can actually show exactly what you mean instead of just tell. Now moving on to the task for this week, it is unsurprisingly to create your own project brief. 
And uh, the way that you will be able to do that is to fill out the template for the requirements specification that is attached with this lesson and to create your own mood board which shows what type of style that you are going for. And just combine these two things into one single document. Then in upcoming lessons, we will be sharing this document with designers and engineers so that they can start creating concepts for your product.